Welcome in to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We got a good one lined up for you today. I'm super excited about the conversation. It's part of the three-legged stool of business, right? We always talk about what is what is harmonious, what is business, how does that tie into this podcast? Well, it's mind, body, and business. Today's conversation, I have a feeling, is going to center a lot around mind and body, but we're going to tie that back to business, which is the harmonious architecture this episode, of course, is brought to you by What If. We are the creators and the spreaders of the harmonious architecture among businesses. We help you grow your business in a streamlined, efficient way so that you don't have to pull your hair out while you're growing your business. Nobody wants that, right? Well, we got a fun conversation here. I have a special guest lined up, and I first want to welcome her to the show. Lori, welcome in. So excited to have you here. Thank you. It's so fun to be here. Yeah, so as I as I hinted in the intro, we're going to be talking about mind and body. Can you give me a little bit of a sense of what you do in the world? Yeah, so I'm a practitioner of Chinese medicine, and there's this idea called qi in Chinese medicine, it, and it's just a Chinese word that means life force or energy, and it's it's the stuff that we need, all of us need, you know, first of all as human beings, um, but also as business people, you know, it, it's 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 really good to have a full tank and be, and that helps us be a better business person. Yeah, that's awesome. Now I've heard the word chi. Um, I I'm familiar ish with what you're yeah. talking about, but let's go deeper. Let's, I want to hear in your words, define what this is, how you're using that term and also how it relates to, I guess, how we show up in the world. Sure. Yeah, it's a good question. So I, I actually use the word energy or life force more. It just so happens that in Chinese medicine, that word qi is used. But I think in our Western minds, you know, we all get the idea of energy or consciousness or life force. And the reason why that matters is because nobody's really ever taught us to like manage our energy. We think that we have a limited amount and actually every single particle and wave of the universe is this life force. <laughs> it's actually also... Um, represented as light in the quantum field. So when we when we make a decision to include that life force in our, you know, in as like our business partners, and we we cultivate a relationship with it day in and day out, you know, we we calm our mind with it and we fill our body with it so that we can, you know, have those full tanks and bring that energy into our business. It's kind of a game changer. That's my experience, and it's the experience of the people I work with. So, yeah, that's interesting. And you said something that um, I'm really curious about. You said make it your business partner. Yeah. I've never heard you know managing your your energy and your state described in that way. That's yeah. So that's really well, cool. So tell me how you do that. Yeah, we could we could call it our like our BFF or our best friend forever, <laughs> if you will. You know, but then when we're business people, you know, we can expand that into being a business partner. So. You know, I used to run my business like just in my own head. And then it there was a there's a point where we reach and harmony is such a beautiful word. It's actually one of my favorite words because it's a combination of balance, right? It's a combination of the balance of our head and our heart, the alpha and the omega, the yin and the yang, you know, the masculine and the feminine. And that energy, when we have that harmony, has to include our higher self. And so I'm referencing this higher self or this higher presence part of us as this business partner potential that we can invite in, ask questions of, and, you know, include in our, all of our decision-making and, and all of our action taking. And it just kind of ups the game and it's really good. Yeah, that's really cool. And let me just say, harmony is a way cooler word than harmonious, but unfortunately there are 10 fundamental business discipline. So we needed a word that was a little bit longer that meant I the totally same thing. I totally get it. I totally get it. But the root of I you know, know, I know. Is harmony. So we got, I, I just think that's a beautiful word. Yes. And that's the thing. We, our goal is to help you run a harmonious business, a business that is in harmony because the opposite of harmony is dissonance. And I think that relates to this conversation, but that's also why we say you need the mind and body aspect as a leader, as an employee, even if you're not showing up at, at your peak performance level, well, no one's going to follow you as a leader and you're not going to be at your company very long if you're an employee. So that's why this is such an important conversation. Um, so what you're saying about harnessing this energy, embracing it, managing it. I love that. Now, what's I guess what's the first step for somebody hearing this this conversation? 
where where do we get this energy? I assume you can't go to Amazon and get it. So like, what's the first step to to ground <laughs> in this no energy? Yeah, I'm addicted too. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, let's just before I answer that, Brennan, let's just go back to that mind body thing because I would I just want to say that most of us as individuals on the planet and as business people for sure, we we tend to run things from our head, hmm. from our you know from like a mental construct perspective. And I happen to know that when we connect our head to our heart and we include our body because we have 70 trillion cells and in every, in, you know, inside every 70 trillion cells, there's 70 trillion atoms. And that atom is a blueprint for wholeness and right function and order and all things working harmoniously, right? And so it's our job to connect our head into our body, into, you know, into our, our heart is the portal to all of this energy and this life force, right? So, uh, and then we get to access all of that wisdom and intelligence and super conscious, you know, goodness that lives in all, all of this cellular activity that is our body. So the first step to go back to your question, I think is, is kind of like life 101. It's just pra the practice of being present. Because if we're not present, then we we don't have a conscious choice, right, to like drop into our body. I mean, right now, any listener could just wiggle their toes or, you know, squeeze their butt muscles and their leg muscles as it's as as one is sitting on a chair, if that's what you're doing, or feel the bottoms of your feet if you're standing, whatever, and just drop your awareness lower into your body so that you include all of that intelligence that lives in all of that cellular activity you know, in, in connection with our head, cutting ourselves off and just operating from our head is, is limited. And so, um, you know, wh why would we want to do that? And okay, it is a practice, but you know, it's a worthy practice. The ROI on this is really, really good. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's funny because everyone always says the best business people have a, su such a strong sense of, of gut or, you know, they make strong gut decisions. Intuitive. And you don't, yeah. yeah, intuitive decisions. You don't hear people saying, you know, oh, he's the smartest person ever. That's why he makes he or she makes those decisions. Like the smart people are in the rooms, but the leaders, I think, are the best connected. And there's something yeah. to be said for that. Yeah, that's a great observation. I love that. Yeah, there is so, something to be said for it. Yeah. So then tell me, when you start working with people, I guess what how does someone know they they want to or need to work with you? Because this is a different conversation than most business owners, leaders, yeah. and employees are having. So what is what does life look like when someone comes to you? Yeah, well, there's two there's two possibilities here. One is that someone has tried everything and nothing's working still, right? And you know, when our back is against the wall, that's when we usually are, you know, throw our hands up and say, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll consider that there is a higher wisdom beyond me or, you know, a field of energy that I can tap into and, you know, draw into my mind, body, life and business. Right. Um, and the other is someone who just really is that type of person who just wants to keep elevating themselves and evolving and, you know, being the best that they can be. And I would suggest that, you know, whether you're whichever type of person that you are, that you start with the foundations, because we all, we always have to go back to like foundational basics. So I already mentioned, you know, being present is like life 101. But if I, I think you're going to put in the show notes, Brandon, there's, I have an offer for your, your listeners, which is a gift of a, a five days, just, you know, 15 or 20 minutes a day where you um, lay all five of these foundations where you figure you learn by this, um, by this material, how to root and center and connect and ground and be present in yourself in order, and then how to practice this on the regular. When I first started it, this is this is actually an important piece. Most human minds will say, I cannot invite that energy in because balls will drop and you know the roof will cave, basically. So what I did is I thought, well, okay. Okay, so I'm going to practice like the first half of a Saturday. This was years ago. And I'm just going to see like what happens. And I realized, well, it wasn't so bad. And then I thought, well, I'll start a half a day on Monday, like a work week, right? And I and then it was like, okay, not bad. I had evidence for my mind that this like partnership could actually be a thing. You know, then I did it like on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. And then it was like so obvious that it was working well. And, you know, no, not only did balls not drop, but actually things got done quicker and 
more intelligently than I could think of. And it was like, okay, well, there's a, this is a thing, <laughs> right? So to, to go back to your question, if someone is willing to just sort of easily in a five day period of time, set these foundational bricks and then practice carrying them into their daily life and in their business, then, you, you know, it will be, it will be as magical as each individual is willing to let it. Yeah, that's that sounds amazing. Now, I if for those of you listening uh, and not watching, the yes, that website will be in the show notes. For those of you watching, I did put Lori's main website on the screen. Um, the one that she's referencing is in the show notes. It's a slightly different website, so make sure you go check that out. And I want to check it out too, but I want to dive in a little bit. So, can you give me a sense of without giving away, you know, the secret sauce? What what are these five elements? What are we kind of yeah, getting ourselves sure. into? And, and what does that look like on the backside of this five-day transformation? For sure. So the first one is the power of being grounded. And all of this, by the way, is based, um, it's based in ancient wisdom and, it, and a, in large part in Chinese medicine. So what human beings don't generally get taught or realize is that we, and th this is something that comes out of uh, the Chinese medical model, is that we are a, hu we're a, a human being and we're between um, earth and the cosmic forces, right? So that the cosmic forces is everything we don't see. So life force is, we would be considered a cosmic force. Yes, we breathe in air and oxygen, but there's actually more in that breath than, you know, than we realize, and um, and that's what fuels us. So it's the power being rooted, you know, upon Mother Earth and within Mother Earth. The power being connected to those cosmic forces above. Um, the power of breath and the power of um, embodiment that we sort of touched on a minute ago, and the power of purpose. So it's interesting because a lot of people think, you know, or they're looking for their purpose or they think they, they think their business is their purpose. But actually our purpose is to live in this alignment with our higher self so that everything we do in our life and in our businesses and in the world is, um, I guess, fueled by that or inspired by that or... Uh, I guess that's the best way to say it, you know, but we, most of us don't do that. It's just, we're disconnected from that. And so the power of being connected is, is the second um, day, so to speak. And once ha someone has this foundation, these foundational principles and they realize how quickly it starts, they start seeing how the feedback of it and how good it is compared to how they were doing it. It's like, why would we ever not, you know, stop doing it? <laughs> and then we have the rest of our lives to just, keep kind of expanding it and creating more grooves that we can work it with it around. And it's, it's pretty good. I'm 62. Yeah. So I've been playing, you know, playing on this playground with this stuff for quite a while. That's awesome. Now, I think when this conversation comes up, the, uh, one of the thoughts that pops into my mind and for most people too, is uh, when you're talking about energy and cosmos and spirituality, it, where does this touch, if at all, uh, religion and that sense of spirituality. Is there a particular religion this re revolves around? Can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, no, it isn't. This isn't really religion. I mean, we could just say the word nature and that uh, would be, that would encompass it, right? Like we cannot be separate from nature, right? So, so we are, we are built by her elements and you know, the wind is something we don't see, but it blows trees, but we can't say it doesn't exist. This is the creative life force or the life force that, that I'm actually talking about. You know, there was a time when human beings put this concept into religious pathways. And, you know, so I don't have anything against any religions. It's just they're they're just not um, expanded enough for me personally. So I call it more of a, of a spiritual or a you know, an energetic or a natural thing, right? Or path, I guess is the way to say it. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. And I think like, like you're saying, um, it's, it's undeniable, right? It's, it's there, you can feel it. And anyone who's done any level of this work, um, I'm obviously not, I'm not on your same playing field, but I've seen how energy works and, and tapping right. into it can be both good and bad, depending on how you, you do it. Um, I love that you guide people through this in a, a manageable five day format and then they can go deeper, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where um, it's just there. It's, it is it's what there. it is. And you know, we're coming to a, pl a point in human history, co the collective consciousness that, you know, I don't mean to sound dramatic when I say this, but if we don't 
cultivate a relationship with this energy. I mean, it's already beating our heart, heart and pumping our blood and digesting our food and giving us words to have this conversation, right? But if we don't cultivate a relationship with it, it's just going to be harder, right? And life is already, you know, has its hardships. So we might as well take the path that gives us our best chance for things to come out well and good. It's our yeah. design anyway, right? So we might as well be in alignment with it. Yeah, I, I I like that approach and how you look at that. And I'll also say and ask you a question around this before we, we get ready to wrap up here. Sure. Um, you know, you said it shows up as light energy. Yeah. And in, in the world today, you, maybe you don't want to be dramatic. I will. I'll take that role. Um, there's obviously a dark energy. And that is yes. very present to me. Um, yes. I, I, I am a, a practicing religious person. I am a Christian. And for me, you know, this conversation is, is very present because lightness and darkness are very present in the Bible and yes. they're very present in the world that we're in. So this conversation is an important one. How does this kind of a practice kind of combat again, not from a religious perspective, but how do we combat the darkness in the world and, and how do we all come together and say, no, there can be harmony if yes. we just, you know, see what is. Yes. It's such a valuable question. And I love that you picked up on the light because I said that word once and you picked up on it. So, <laughs> so here's, here's my perspective on this. And this is actually what light has taught me or, you know, the consciousness of the intelligent universe, which we all have access to. The very first thing that each of us, I think have to do is, is heal the, the darkness in ourselves and bring light to it. And this is true. This is actually true healing. And the more of us that do that, then the projections onto the world stage, which we're seeing as very dark right now. Um, and they're coming up for a reason because there's so much light that has been coming into the planet that it's, it's bringing, it's making everything visible, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so, but our job as individuals, and I take this, I don't, I don't want to say seriously, but I take it to heart. I know that my job is to everything that comes up in me is to bring light to it and ask for the transmutation of it, the alchemization of it, if you will, back into light, because that's what all of life is anyway. And it, it you know, I don't have any right to let my traumas and my stories and my beliefs and my cultural influences to be less than light. That's how, that's how I take it to, to myself. And we need all hands on deck. So the more hearts and souls and individuals who are willing to do the work of bringing themselves into the center of their light, which is what we already are anyway, then the more the dark will crumble. Absolutely. I love how you put that. And I think that's, if we take nothing else away from this conversation, it's what you hinted at just right there, which was when you see angry people in the world or, or darkness, people you disagree with, that's them not understanding how they're projecting in the world. And 100%. if you can just approach that with compassion, with love, with empathy and say they're showing up because they're you know, they're wounded, they're not they haven't fixed themselves yet and just give them some space, I think the world would be a much better place. Do you, yeah, do you agree with that? Yeah, if we hand our judgment of what we're observing of a wounded person to the light. I mean that's 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 important work, right? Yeah. I love that. So if, if it was not obvious already from listening to this or watching this episode, um, you know, we, we covered a lot of important ground here. That's maybe outside of the realm of business, but I disagree with that. I, normal people would say, this is not a business conversation for me. It is because I know that as a leader, that's the I in harmonious inspire. If you don't yes. inspire your people, if you're projecting and you're not managing how you're showing up in the world, in your workplace, nobody's going to want to follow you. You can't make a difference in the world. You can't fulfill the mission and vision of your company, which is the N of navigation. This all plays together. And that's why business is the three-legged stool, mind, body, business. Yes, yeah. this is a mind, body conversation, but it all spills over into your business. So make sure you're managing that well. Make sure you're doing this work and understanding who you are and how you show up in the world. So Lori, I want to thank you for having this conversation and bringing this topic to light. It's something that we need to talk about 
a whole lot more. So can you tell uh, the listeners, the watchers, where we can follow you, find you on social media, um, as well as your website that's on the screen? Sure. Um, I, I wonder if I should send you links. So Lori Morse is my handle at Instagram and on Facebook. Um, and then my other, and then LinkedIn is the same. So it's all pretty um, consistent. So at, you know, Lori Morse in all of those places. I'm not a TikTok girl. So sorry for those who are TikTok <laughs> people. <laughs> TikTok energy is a conversation for a different day. We'll have a whole other day. Out. Right. There we go. And thank you for what you're doing, Brandon. I love it. Thank you. I appreciate that. So listen, you you heard her. You know where to go find her. We'll include all of that in the show notes. Um, and depending on the platform you're, you're streaming this on right now, um, she will be tagged somewhere unless it's TikTok. But um, yes. I, I encourage you to go reach out, do that five-day Kickstarter challenge, and see what happens. See if you see the benefits in your life. Um, and remember, wherever you're watching, subscribe, like, comment, Give me your takeaways. I want to know your questions. I'll get you in touch with Lori if you have those questions. But we love having you as part of this show. You are the reason we do it. So make sure you subscribe and like. And we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.